you just don't see him around anymore. When I was a young man, and believe me, that was a, a long time ago, they were everywhere. From Kmart to the local bodega, they were, well, everywhere. But, but they're all gone now. Oh, sure, you might find one for sale at a local swap meet or flea market, and for not very much money, I assure you, but what's the point? They ain't good for nothing. I'm talking, of course, about the outdated but historic VHS tape. Well, hello there, old man Kelly here. Jeff to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. You know, when I was a child, we had three network TV channels and a couple of local ones. We had very limited viewing options. But here's the kicker. To see a program, one had to have their butt parked in front of the TV set while it was being broadcast. If you missed it, you were out of luck. Your only hope was to catch it during summer reruns and, well, summer reruns is a different subject for another time. Do you know what it's like to show up at the playground, at school, and all the other kids are talking about the latest episode of The Six Million Dollar Man or Happy Days? And you're the only sixth grader who missed it because your parents made you go to Aunt Beatrice's house for her 60th birthday. Aunt Beatrice, who doesn't have a TV. It wasn't a pleasant feeling, I assure you. Anyway, if you missed a program, you missed it. There was no streaming, no on-demand or series on DVD, nothing. You lost your opportunity. Now that all changed with VHS, the home video system. It was a way to record what was on television as it was happening. This cassette contains a roll of magnetic tape that travels from one spool to the other. Now, magnetic tape was invented in Germany in 1928, originally for the purpose of recording audio. It was based on the invention of magnetic wire from 1888. It works by having a long spool of plastic film, one side covered with tiny magnetic particles. The tape moves over the playhead while in record mode and aligns the tiny particles positive and negative poles into patterns that capture the sound, or in this case, the video information. When in play mode, the tape moves over the playheads and that alignment of particles is transferred back into pictures and sound. Now, I don't expect you youngsters to completely understand this technology. I don't even understand it myself. But the first attempts at a home video system started in 1971. Sony introduced the U-Matic format, but it failed because, well, it was very expensive and the tapes could only hold about 20 minutes of video. So Sony reworked this technology and created the Betamax system. In 1975, they introduced the first successful home video system, but Betamax had a problem. The tapes only held about 60 minutes of video. This was fine for home use, but Hollywood wanted to sell movies on videotape, and Sony refused to make longer ones. So the JBC Corporation took up the challenge. They wanted to create their own video system. Their development team had a few basic rules. The system had to be compatible with any ordinary television set. Picture quality had to be similar to a normal air broadcast. The tapes must have at least two hours of recording capacity. Tapes must be interchangeable between machines. The overall system should be versatile, meaning it can be scaled and expanded, such as connecting a video camera or dubbing between two recorders. Recorders should be affordable, easy to operate, and have a low maintenance cost. Recorders must be capable of being produced in high volume. Their parts must be interchangeable, and they must be easy to service. So JBC released a VHS a year after Betamax, and that started the Tape Format War! The thing is, beta tapes were smaller and had a better picture quality, but VHS had a two-hour tape. And here's another thing. Other manufacturers had to license the beta format if they wanted to produce their own beta system, which cost money. JBC made VHS open source so anyone can manufacture a VHS system free of charge. And that created more competition and lower prices. And then, of course, there was the porn industry, who chose VHS over Sony, so Sony lost the war. Now, I was always a VHS man. I remember paying up to $15 for a blank tape, and that was a $1980. And to buy a film on VHS, well, they could cost up to 80 bucks. Now, these tapes could record in two, four, or six hour mode, but the longer you recorded, the worse the quality got. The long play speed was almost unwatchable. 
But let's say you use the long play mode to record a full Thursday night programming on CBS. And later you decided to watch the Johnny Carson off the tape. Well, that wasn't easy. First you had to fast forward the tape, stopping every now and again to find out where you were at. Oh wait, we're only at Magnum P.I.? We need to keep going. We need to pass Knott's Landing to get to the Tonight Show. Damn it, too far. Johnny's in his monologue. Rewind. Fast forward. Oh, where are we at now? Fast forward. Rewind. That's it. Carson. Oh crap. The tape jammed. The tape jammed in the machine. That's the killer. Sometimes tapes would jam up in the machine and you'd spend hours trying to get it out without breaking the tape or ruining the recorder. And if you did get it out, you would, for, you would forever have a bad spot on that tape. Every time it would pass through the machine, the picture would go crazy. And let me tell you about tracking. Tracking was something that no one understood, but as tapes got old, they would develop tracking problems. They would flip and they would have this fuzzy part on the bottom of the thing and they'd get all crazy and you'd have a little knob on the machine that you could adjust the tracking and it would help sometimes, but it would never totally fix the problem. That was one of the drawbacks of tape. The magnetic coating would degrade with time. But here's the thing. For the first time since the invention of broadcast television, we could record programs and watch them at our convenience, and it changed everything. I mean, at one time I had a huge collection of VHS tapes, but now they're all trash. But for 20 years, VHS dominated the market. And then there was the slow decline. It all started with DVDs. DVDs were cheaper, more convenient, smaller, a lot better quality. They had chapters, and more important to Hollywood, they were copy protected. But that wasn't enough to kill the VHS, because VHS could record and re-record, something you couldn't do with DVDs. But then with DVRs and streaming, well, tapes really became obsolete. And the last manufacturer of VHS equipment finally gave up in 2006. Now there are some that are trying to bring back the VHS tape, like happened with vinyl for audio, but I don't think so. The quality just isn't there. But now the big question is, what do I do with about 2,000 of these things? Toss them into a landfill? I don't know, but I'm Old Man Kelly. I want to thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with something else, right? Bye.